welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings uh, around here, sort of, uh, about the uh, space of in Mendham. Um, yeah, mostly. Uh, this portion of it. Um, whatever this means. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, interesting week, uh, as most of them are. Um, so the Inmendum channel did go over 10,000 subscribers. It only took 10 years longer than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, not really a milestone in any kind of positive way. It's just sort of a, a recognition of, you know, colossal failure. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I've just, uh, through the brute force of time alone, uh, you know, made it happen. Um, so, but yes, it's still something, I suppose. Yeah, somehow relevant. Um, so, yeah, two different, completely different kinds of videos this week. Um, they're continuing the conversation with Anta Kantavad in um, try not to get too fucking angry mode. And it seems to be working. I mean, I, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know. It's, this is all you've got. I mean, in a sense, you do have to attempt to negotiate with your captors, you know, at some point, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, the, the other people exist, and, you know, short of, again, having the power to just say, fuck you, I don't, <laughs> I don't wish to invest in the words to convince you, I'll just, you know, run you over with my mega steamroller thing. Um, the, whatever, happy flattener. Um, and then the other part was this whole continuing little bit of drama spin. I mean, it started off as a, a dissection of, uh, fake Sagan's transitions and to see if there was anything fake Sagan had learned, <laughs> you know, that was really cool or something. And it just kind of turns out that, well, he sort of learned that, you know, being a shithead isn't great. Um. But the rest of it is all kind of, yeah. Uh, I have compared it to, you know, I've known a lot of alcoholics, and um, they're very, um, I mean, the 10, 12 step thing does work. The, the you know, the whole Al Alcoholics Anonymous thing, you know, the whole love you buddy, special snowflakey kind of approach. And then the, with the religious context, you know, the, um, you know, control only that which you can control and give everything up, up to God and trust in higher power obligations and don't disappoint the God and whatever all that adds up to. But it does seem to work. But I mean, yeah, from, from my perspective, um, I could argue that, eh, you know, if you've got a brain tumor, it would work if I just, you know, cut your head off and kept your heart beating. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, yeah, you're still alive, sort of. Um, you know, but yeah, it doesn't really count as, as much of a, an accomplishment. Um, bath, water, baby, bullshit, blah, blah, blah. So I'd say it's too high a price to pay for the recovery. Um, but anyway. Yes. Um, and then the rest of it's got sort of this drama element of just, you know, uh, Mendham's gone too far again, all that kind of crap, uh. You know, now I'm a Stephanie denier. <laughs> you know, I've been all kinds of deniers and an evildoer of all kinds. And uh, this is just another one of these, you know, hysterical overreactions. Um, don't pay attention to the facts. You know, just brutalize me with popular opinion. And we all think Stephanie's just wonderful. And as if I said anything against Stephanie, which I didn't do. <laughs> well, beyond saying that she sort of does have a self-interest in keeping the uh, Jesus Freak family, whatever that is, the, the the multiple elements and branches of the family, <laughs> you know, because it is a divorce. Uh, there's two family incomes involved here. And um, the argument is that somehow they can't take care of this problem. The, the parents of this problem can't fix the problem. They don't have the funds. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the argument, because, you know, they totally evaded making that argument. 
you know, explaining how they can't do it. You know, they're just, you know, they're mortgaged. They can't, no money. Can't do it. No, it's not what it is about. It's just about more fraud from Christians, as, as I've been pointing out, and that's all it is. It's just more of the chicanery, and I'll use my, my, um, my love and my blessings, you know, to make people think I give a fuck about them while I pick their pockets, you know, in a, some sympathetic way. That's it. Nothing else going on here. Steal from the poor, give to the not-so-bad-off been going on for centuries. Everybody just seems to love the plan. Wow, that's just great. Don't rock the boat. We got a really good plan going here. Why fuck with it? To work for the Catholic Church. I mean, it's just a great strategy. So, yeah, fuck. That's all you can say to this bullshit. Um, yeah, so those are the videos. Some of them, uh, some good bits of uh, humor. Had one of the best laughs I've had in a while, I must say. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, the rest of it's really hard to get through. Some of it is just so gross. So anyway, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, Jesus Freak. Um, in Brett Keen had a live room, and what they basically did was make a bunch of um, vulgar jokes, racist jokes. That none of them were really funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, petty stuff like, you you don't you don't you don't own kettle chips, or some kind of shit like that. I mean, somehow racism. I well, whatever. I I couldn't really follow along because the jokes were so lame. Um, oh, and you just you know I have to point out though, just as a little side note, um, just because of the man woman thing, and sometimes that. Um, that separation of identity is just so obvious in some cases. You know, because Mrs. Brett Keen came in the room for a while, because I guess Brett had to go empty his fart bag. And, um, it, you know, she started talking about Christmas tree decorations. Look <laughs> what color theme she was going with this year. <laughs> just, I mean, you know, I, I can't really, I mean, I can't make an expression in a podcast, but yes, I'm making an expression as if um, somebody has said the craziest thing in the world. But anyway, it was one of those kind of moments for there for a second. Um, I mean, just so obvious, you know, that Venus-Mars problem. But anyway, that's a whole separate subject. So again, so so Jesus, you know, he he did the whole censoring the room, right? Because they they did bring up the subject of anti-natalism, and I guess I should talk about it because their arguments were so terrible. So this is after they've, you know, it's after I've directly answered Fake Sagan's questions. I've directly told him why I'm still alive. Is because at never any point in my life as I I've actually I actually have some power. I have some ability to communicate. And I was doing that when I was 25 years old. I had a printed newspaper that I paid to deliver to people. <laughs> I had to pay the postage to send it out to people, um, arguing for vegetarianism, uh, well, uh, animal rights, uh, uh, and, and the right to die, and subjects like that, uh, democracy and whatnot. And it was quite a futile effort, and no power. And I have been I was quite comfortable with dying at any day in my 30s, uh, you know, before YouTube, you know, yeah, I was just, I was alive because I didn't urgently need to die. I mean, I have some little miseries, but nothing major. Um, and, uh, and it's just also because of the entanglements. Again, cleaning up your life is not that easy. I have a lot of junk, and I can't you know, it doesn't make any sense for me to force somebody else to clean it up. So if I'm going to die, I have to make a whole commitment <laughs> to a bunch of work uh, to clean up my life. Uh, i got cats that I, are dependent on me. There's just different things. And there's other, of course, there's other people in my life who are sort of, de they're dependent on me to help them out. And uh, so, yeah, you live. But that's all. But, I mean, this whole accusation that there's some kind of hypocrisy. If we don't just all jump off a bridge, we, we are insincere in our plea 
that we don't appreciate being shoved out of ignorant vaginas. That somehow I made the mistake. I'm here because it was my mistake to be born. I made the error. And I have to correct the error. And somehow that error gets corrected by me not saying anything. I mean, I could make the argument to you, the whole reason why I exist is because nobody explained the facts of life to my mother. And if they had, they might have easily convinced her, no, the right road for you is enjoy your life. Uh, you like art, do art. Go to, you, know, you love traveling, go to Europe. This is where your life should take you. That, uh, you know, raising kids, you're not going to enjoy it. And my mother didn't enjoy it. I mean, she almost drove off a bridge. Uh, you know, she had four kids in three years. Um, and, uh, you know, she, you know, she had to go on drugs to get through life. Um, the postpartum whatever bullshit. But I'm just, you know, so this this is just such an idiotic argument. The philosophy is, that, you know, in fake thinking, made the argument, well, they're not going to breed. Again, like philosophy is inherited. I mean, these, these arguments are so fucking stupid that you're saying, well, maybe this is the evidence that I've really won the argument. Is that when, they're, when their comebacks are this bad, you know, you're saying, well, I've won, right? When they totally ignore your statements and pretend you didn't say them, and when they say things as stupid as, well, philosophy is uh, genetic, we know that, so uh, they won't be able to breed, so their philosophy will die out. I mean, that's just so fucking retarded. Thunderfoot. <laughs> you know, so fake Sigurdsson has something in common with Thunderfoot and that he absolutely doesn't know shit about evolution. Um, but just amazingly stupid arguments. So yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. And just amazingly crude and idiotic characterizations of the philosophy. Um, no recognition that the whole point is is to prevent unnecessary harm. The kind of harm that uh, Brett Keane stepped right into. He had a disabled child. <laughs> you know, and it still doesn't occur to him that you know maybe, maybe this is not exactly uh, uh, something he's an expert at that he's got some sort of authority to be imposing this, making this decision about how valuable it is. I mean, you know, the arrogance of it. And again, well, Brett Keane's hypocrisy is just enormous because, as stated in the past, he has conceded some elements of this argument and uh, recognized that people are maybe too reckless and they really don't think about what they're stepping into. But now that he's a Christian, you can't say anything like that, of course. Um, not, I mean, now that he's calling himself something Christian-like, and I'm going to be wrong, he's not a Christian. It's the same nihilist cunt he always was. And it's, like I said, it's demonstrated in the fact that none of these Christians behave anything like a Christian, if you really believed. I mean, you can imagine, any intelligent person can say for a minute, what if I really believed in heaven and hell? What if I really believed um, in this story, uh, what would I do, and how would I behave? I'd certainly behave, I, it would be really easy for me to know, okay, don't take the Lord's name in vain, certainly don't say anything hateful to other people, it's about my behavior, not about their behavior, I don't get to react, no, I mean, lots of things, very simple, and then you'd know in the world what you want to do is be <clears throat> explaining, uh, why it's important that other people understand what they're, the game they're in and what's going to happen to them. Um, and clearly Jesus Freak doesn't even do any of that. Um, he's basically admitted in this, in this conversation, this room, that he thinks um, that all you have to do to be a Christian is just say, I accept you, Jesus Christ, and I supposedly get baptized. And now it doesn't matter what your deeds are. Deeds are, who cares? It's just about the fact that you've acknowledged the existence of God and given your life to Him. And now you can pretty much fuck up all you want as long as somebody blesses you before you die or you say, I'm sorry, before you die. And it's all okay. Deeds are irrelevant. Would I even want to spread that story? Would I even want to tell other people, yeah, this is the truth. It's completely fucked up, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Rape, pillage, do whatever the fuck you want. Just keep saying, I'm sorry, and, you know, I, you know love you. 
That's all. Just words. Just a, a ritual. Do the ritual, and it's all okay. Um, so anyway, it's an idiotic religion. Um, way too idiotic to be believed as a religion. But again, if you knew, if the, if you really sincerely believe that, that's all it takes. Well, why doesn't Jesus Freak just say that? Why doesn't he just come out and say to people, "Hey, look, don't even worry about it." Okay, just pretend for a few minutes that you believe, because that's all you got to do, is just say, okay, I believe, I believe, I believe. Just say you want to believe. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to, I want to. Um, and you're done. It's, hey, game over. Throw some water on your head. Um, say some little blah, blah, blah words. Uh, I baptize thee in the name of uh, the Son, the Father, the Holy Ghost, blah, blah, blah. Duty, 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 duty. Blah, blah, blah. There, all done. And you're covered. You know? That's easy. <laughs> you know, you you got a backup plan. It's pitiful. Um, but he doesn't, like I said, that's not what he's talking He's talking about deeds. He's talking about all the things you shouldn't do. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, apparently all that crap isn't going to matter. But there is a, Jesus Freak has some weird interpretations of the Bible. So he has some idea, I think, that there's a hierarchy in heaven. And that people with more crowns. You know, they live in the better neighborhoods. People less crowns go to the badder neighborhoods. Some kind of crap like that. Apparently there's slums in heaven. And, uh, you know, Trump penthouses. <sighs> yeah, like Jesus Christ is going to get one of those. Oh, it's pathetic. Uh, anyway. But he's just so trivial, right? If you believed in God, you'd just... So anyway, you got in the whole gun thing. And I don't really want to talk about gun rights. It's not about gun rights. Okay, the subject I was bringing up was if you believe in Jesus, you really should feel kind of indestructible because you know that he's he's taking care of it. If something bad happens to you, he's going to like double up on the good or something or it'll have a huge good impact and that whatever's left behind, those people will be saved through your... Um, you're enduring the pain. So, if you're going to get hurt, just like Jesus on the cross, it's for some really good reason. And if you trust your God and you trust your Jesus, then you know that, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Um, it's, you know, there's the line, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And what that's really saying, though, is justice is mine, saith the Lord. I'll take care of it. You take care of you. I'll take care of the rest. Um, I'll sort the rest out, and justice will be done. Um, so don't worry about it. And and obviously Jesus preached, um, the meek will inherit the earth. Now I don't think he was thinking the meek were carrying swords, or in the modern day um, variant, guns, and relying on them. Um, so. <laughs> you know, there's, I think this is, you know, the whole forgiveness thing, the whole thing. What would Jesus do? And does somebody really think Jesus, if confronted with a criminal, he's going to pull out his cult and uh, shoot him in the head? And there's no, you know, in Jesus Freak's conversation, there's no shooting somebody in a body part, injuring someone. They always talk about killing somebody. Like, there's no way these people can figure out how to shoot low. They have to shoot the headshot. It's always kind of ironic and funny that, that, that they never have a conversation about shooting somebody to injure somebody or to stop somebody. They always talk about killing somebody. I mean, most people shot don't die. <laughs> There's no reason to associate shooting with dying, unless that's maybe what you were you're figuring on doing, is killing. So that's kind of a giveaway also. But anyway, the funniest thing about the story was, okay, I mean, there was two elements of this one story Jesus Freak told. So apparently he's changing the oil in his car and his motorcycle, and somebody breaks into his house, which I guess means they walk into his open house. And who you figure would do that but some teenager or something, right? I mean, who's going who's to... The guy's in his driveway changing oil. I mean, I don't know where Jesus Freak's garage is, but, you know, just saying. And so apparently, Jesus Freak just left guns laying around. So he just had one laying by his computer on the desk, and somebody took it. So when he came into the house, he noticed there was something disrupted, and he didn't tell us what else was stolen. Um, <laughs> you know, 
But I mean, how much can the criminal carry, uh, realistically? Um, so we don't even get that part of the story. So again, it's another Jesus Freak story with no details. It doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. And so what does Jesus Freak do? He knows that the guy's got a gun and was in his house. And so what does he say? I'll go into the, further into the house and go get my gun. So to go get his gun, he's now unarmed, theoretically, right? Unless he carried his gun with him to change the oil. Another one of his guns, his 12 guns. You know, he couldn't sell any of those for his daughter, of course. No, no way to do that. I need my 12 guns. Uh, I have 12 fingers, right? Oh, wait a minute. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so then he decides to go say, oh, I have to go get the criminal because if he's still in the house, I have to go look for him. So it's, the whole idea was to go to the bedroom, get his gun, and then go searching through his house for some gun-toting criminal so he can have a gunfight with him or something. And then he says, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm not trying to create a, a mortal situation. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? When, obviously, a, a rational person would say, who knows who took this gun? Teenager? Psychotic crazy fuck? Homeless guy? A crack addict? Who the fuck knows? Why the fuck would you even go anywhere near it? You just say, somebody who's been in my house, you go next door, call the cops. What rational person sits there and says, I'm going to go look for trouble, but I'm doing it the Jesus way <laughs> to defend myself? Yeah, I don't think so. You're looking for trouble. Or maybe he was worried because he, you know, he had all his porn out, you know, all his homo porn, and he didn't want the cops coming and seeing all his shit, his anal pro dildo -y machine and all that kind of stuff was all laying right out in the open. He didn't want to have the cops come over and see all that shit, so he had to get upstairs and, you know, clean up. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Couldn't invite the cops over if he has a bunch of kitty porn laying out in the open, right? Right on the computer screen. Uh, I'll do my own. You know, if Jesus Creek doesn't want to provide the details, I'll provide my own. Yeah, it's a lot more fun that way. Um, anyway. I hate that fucker. Um, so it was my point. Yeah, so, so, and, and so what, what is the, the moral of the story, right? He committed the, the ultimate crime of the gun owner. So he's saying, I mean, let's not even bother with the statistics, right? He's defending this as if gun possession in homes protects people in their homes. When we know statistically that's not what it does. It gets your family killed. It gets your children killed. That's what it statistically does. It doesn't, doesn't protect you from the psychotic murderer. Uh, yeah, it might it might protect you from a petty thief, but very there aren't that many psychotic murderers out there. You know, as much as everybody watches the movies and everything, no, it really doesn't happen that often. Like it happens as often as uh, you know, uh, lightning striking you or <laughs> you know, airplanes landing on your car, that kind of stuff. It doesn't happen very often, uh, statistically. It's not the number one cause of death in America. Not even close. Uh, having surgery, having elective surgery, you're more likely to die from that, Jesus freak, than a home invader. You know how many times more likely? Well, I don't know either, but the number's really high, like a thousand or ten thousand times more likely to die from um, non-necessary surgery than uh, a home invader. <laughs> so, so let's just ignore the facts, all right, that there's no evidence that guns make you safer. They, in fact, or they make your family safer. No evidence of that at all. And even if you came up with some, even if you could say there were a bunch of criminals stopped, the price you're paying for is the known deaths of children. You're killing kids to stop criminals. And again, I would say that's not a fair trade. It's not a rational trade-off. Not even close to a good trade-off. All right, so you know, just ignore the facts and tell silly stories about how you're doing something honorable and Jesus-like. All right, but the worst part of it is, right? So he thinks he's doing this for his family. And what did he do? He gave a criminal a gun. 
he, now he made a criminal more dangerous. So when that criminal comes to my house, he has a gun now. Now I'm threatened. Now my life is less secure. Because Jesus Freak is an asshole. And can't take responsibility for the weapons he owns. He just leaves them lying around. And he brought up later security systems. Well, is it irrational to have security systems? Well, apparently it's irrational to you. You've got loaded guns sitting around in your house uh, and you didn't have a security system? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, yeah, so I, 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 I wish that they really would track these things. I mean, maybe in the future Jesus Freak will find out that the gun he recklessly put in the hands of a criminal kill the family and then I wonder how he's going to do his addition then and what he'll be thinking about what his impact was because he wanted to play with um, deadly force in the Jesus way in, in, the, in the Jesus style Jesus style deadly force and, you know, and he calls that being a good Christian it's a good Christian not to count on God God won't take care of you is what he's saying clearly so in spite of Jesus saying, you know, do the birds have microwave ovens and machine guns? Uh, well, does God take care of them? Yeah, he doesn't protect everyone from an eagle. doesn't save every bird's life for, you know, to, to be 90 years old. But I guess you'd understand that some of that is because we gain, we grow as individuals through um, the attrition which I don't buy into, but that's your theory. That's the theory of your God. <laughs> you know, you just wanted, you want to change the odds. You, you know, God has you slated to be a pawn, and you're saying, I don't want to be a pawn, so I'm going to change my status to bishop or rook. You know, that seems like all you're doing is saying, well, God, I don't like your plan. I'm going to augment it and change it. Maybe he, isn't, maybe he won't appreciate that. We don't get to know the truth, so yeah, there, there's, there's no fucking God. He's not going to explain. No chance of God explaining that one. Um, but anyway, I just found it so hypocritical. You know, the the gun-toting Jesus file uh, is just uh, bullshit. Anyway, but what a menace to reason and logic. <laughs> just a menace to these things. Uh, so, alright, so is there anything else in particular I had to talk about from there? Yeah, it was just a horrid conversation, a bunch of, I mean, it's just, and, and watching fake Sagan sit there and, and quietly listen to, to Jesus freak go on and on and on, and just, wow, it's just painful to watch. Um, eesh. <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, so but it is interesting that you know Brett Keane's found a little hook for a while. You know he'll run out eventually, but you know this whole interview thing is eventually he's going to run out of things to interview. I mean he's plowing through them, you know, three a day or something. Not quite that fast, but he'll eventually plow through them all, and he'll, that's it. Yeah, it'll be done. But he's, uh, apparently the amazing atheist has agreed. I don't know what the financial bargain was. <laughs> I don't know. If, <laughs> Brett probably promised, yeah, I'll, I'll let you, um, you know, you, you, all, all, you, all the drunken peasants can, you know, take a turn, you know, like paddling my big fat ass or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know what he agreed to, but there has to be some catch, I would imagine. But anyway, so that's a pretty good catch for Brett. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, but yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> yes, it's just, whatever, it just doesn't make much sense, and it's just all such a pile of shit, um, because none of it's terribly Christian, and none of it's framed at all in any appreciation for what Jesus stood for, um, in terms of being against all of this um, pretense of being religious, wearing it on your sleeve, and well, that's the irony of Jesus Freak's kind of comments, because it seems like 
Jesus was kind of a deeds person, not so much a wear it on your sleeve person. Um, but anyway, uh, what else? I mean, Jesus, Jesus did say things like, you know, just do the golden rule thing and you're, you're set. We're good. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> Uh, so what else do I want to say? So, yeah, whatever. I know. I, I'm just not terribly interested in interviews. So my interest will probably wane when the relevant characters are out of the conversation. And, you know, and I'm not going to be brought up. <laughs> you know, if I'm not going to be brought up, who cares, right? Um, or something, some subject I find relevant, like antinatalism or vegetarianism or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's enough. Or what a lying cunt Brett Keen is, uh, you know, uh, but maybe the amazing atheists take care of that. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there's anything else that's uh, lots of stuff. I'm just saying that's just stuff on my mind. No point in dragging this out too long. Um, I don't going to have much to report on the Anaconda pod front. Um, it's sort of relevant though to my desire to do these these structured debates eventually. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the idea of uh, um, some, some way to filter an argument and say, that, you know, there's sort of an obligation to walk up the staircase one stair at a time. And that way you can find out where there's a, an unresolvable problem that's no point in walking further up the staircase if you don't fix it. Well, I mean, there's probably a point in jumping over a couple of missing stairs here and there. Because sometimes from the higher stair, it's easier to fix the lower stair. You know, you have a better person. They, they, it's easier to show somebody how that stair can be fixed. Maybe that would be the way to say it. Um, you can get a better angle on the brokenness of that stair. Uh, you can see the split in the wood easier or something. I don't know how to say it, but, you know. Um, so, I mean, this is all practice for that kind of thing. And uh, I do have some ideas for videos and things, and because you know, they're very busy, and I do want to get back to the physics, so I'll probably be doing that in a few days uh, more intensively and um, with greater concentration of my time and such. But anyway, so um, yeah, I guess it was my birthday and Thanksgiving uh, during this week, so yeah, I forgot about those. Uh, both events took place without incident. Um, I don't, you know, I don't Thanksgiving. I don't usually birthday either, so, you know. Uh, if I just happened that I had, it was a baking day, <laughs> so, you know, I bake things I usually don't bake, like cake and pie. But anyway, um, you don't really need to know any of that. No, probably not. Uh, so... So I think that's it. There's nothing else critical. So till the next uh, time, which will be same time, same channel kind of a thing, or roughly within a day, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, in, you know, unless some sort of... Uh, it is determined that I am not to have survived the week or something. But uh, I should be back. And... You know, I, like I said, I like to say best wishes or something, but, you know, you all know that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so, it's like I've been worse wishing things for my whole life, and none of them, you know, none of my worst wishes have come true. So, yeah, it's kind of a pointless exercise, that whole wishy thing. So, anyway, till next time, and such, and so forth and whatnot.